if we want to prepare our young people for the 21st century workforce, if we want to prepare them for life, everybody needs to have a meaningful cross-cultural exchange during their education. It's so easy to say that that war is not in my community or that famine isn't on my continent or in my country. But when you hear somebody who's your same age telling their story, it's much more difficult to ignore. What we do is the new campfire. All these young people are coming and they're gathering around this box, this video conferencing equipment, to share their stories. It's about developing empathy for each other. The more you identify with someone who's different than you, the less you are uh, likely to go into conflict with that person. The organization was founded in 1998. We knew that the idea of video conferencing was out there. That was really much more in the boardroom and not so much in the classroom. So we were like, okay, what about if we could find a way to get schools that don't have video conferencing outside the U.S. access to it? If we focus on where there's the biggest culture gap, we don't connect kids in the U.S. with kids in Europe. We connect them where we've identified there's the greatest need to break down stereotypes and stigmas between young people. So right now we really focus on Afghanistan, Pakistan, throughout the Middle East and North Africa and the Horn of Africa. One of the most powerful programs that I was a part of is when we linked schools in Rwanda with schools in the United States. And we talked about the genocide. And when somebody is so authentic and you're able to hear that story firsthand, it, can, it, it, it just changes you. It happened to Jews. There were many of them who, who died. Six million in six years. And here, more or less than one million people in three months. So how did it happen? How? Our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our fellow, fellow humans. In those ones, there are many children, there are many young people. Maybe they were the ones to be our next president, our next ministers. There were many doctors in there. Maybe they would have made the world a better place. The world had said never again before. What about now? Is it for nothing also? What if in some years, in some years it happens again? Let's not allow it. Let's not allow it. It's much painful. Very painful. Let's not allow it. As the young generation, let's do it. Hearing stories like that firsthand is really powerful. And I think that uh, it makes kids in the US jump. You know, how did I not know about this? How did I not? hear about this and they want to be a part of it you know after they've had this experience they like they're like okay you know like what can I do how can I be a part of this thing that's much bigger than my community and they realize there's responsibility I don't know something just sparked something inside of me the very first conference just let me know like wow you know I told my mom I went home and I bragged to my mom so much like Mom, I really see how bad people got it. She always used to tell me it's people who will kill to be in my shoes, but I never really believed it. I just played it off. But now I see it. it's the truth. It really hit home what really happened. And I don't think if that if we would have had that conference, I would have realized how bad it was. It would have just all been numbers to me. A lot of people will say that this isn't the same as physical travel. And there is nothing that can replace that. But the fact is, is that only 3% of Americans in their education are having that type of experience. So what about the other 97%? And the 3% who are traveling are going to London, Paris, and Rome. They're not going to Mogadishu, they're not going to Kabul, they're not going to Islamabad. We think we're having this global conversation. My kind of image right now is who's participating is, is that, it's that image of, of the earth from at nighttime, where you see the world lit up. But those young people, those kids, those communities in the dark, they don't have electricity. You know, they don't have the internet. They're not a part of the conversation. So I'm really excited about engaging those communities as they come online, the possibilities. 
every young person needs to have this meaningful cross-cultural exchange. It's not, it's no longer that's a nice to have. I hope that the impact is when these young people become adults that they're better prepared for the world, that they are entering the world realizing that they're part of something much larger. It's not just about being American, that it's about being a global citizen.